products are getting pretty weird, and this one has a lot of problems, some of which you already, I'm sure, know about. Let's talk about it. This is the Rabbit R1. If you don't know what it is, it is basically an AI pocket companion. Charges with type C, has a SIM card slot right here. 1000 milliamp hour battery, it's running off of Android. You have a little dial here and a button for controls. And this is a rotating camera that flips around. Let me do this real quick. Can I flip it the other way? This way maybe? Oh, there we go. Look at that. You can hold this button and talk to it when you do his little ears perk up. How is the weather today? The weather today is partly cloudy, with a high of 85 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I feel the need to check that. Yeah, that is wrong. This AI Pocket Companion is mm, confidently wrong, very frequently, as a lot of you know AI can be these days. But specifically comparing it to things like chat GPT, it makes the device feel a little bit redundant and even pointless. I pointed the camera at my dog and I said, hey, what kind of dog is this? Well, the first time it said, oh, that's a cute beagle, which is not correct. My dog is a black lab and border collie mix and a little bit of pip. Chat GPT 4.0 said, based on the picture, the dog has to be a mixed breed. It has some characteristics that suggest it could have Labrador Retriever and possibly Border Collie or Pitbull Terrier in its mix. The broad head, short coat, and playful demeanor traits are commonly found in these breeds. However, without more information or a DNA test, it's hard to determine which uh, exact mix. That's spot on. Everything I've done with GPT 4.0 has been spot on. The rabbit has been very, very hit or miss. So let's try this. This is an easy one. Come on. There we go. What kind of phone is this? Taking a look now. It's Pixel this is 8a. A Google Pixel phone. Okay, that's pretty close. Google Pixel Distinctive. phone. Let's try something a little bit harder. We'll test it both with this rabbit and with ChatGPT. This is a pair of Focal Batiste, by the way. What kind of headphones are these? Nothing. Okay, well, that didn't even work. What type of headphones are these? Let me see. These appear to be a pair of Bathus headphones. It got it right. The image shows two black headphones with a distinctive perforated circular design on the ear cuffs, which is characteristic of the Bathys brand of headphones. Uh, Batiste isn't a brand. It's a model, but still it got it right that it's a Focal Batiste. Let's try it with ChatGPT. What kind of headphones are these? These headphones are the Focal Bathys. They are known for their premium build quality, featuring aluminum and magnesium materials, and are highly regarded in the audiophile community for their excellent sound quality and comfort. Do they have any unique features? Yes. The Focal Bathys headphones have several unique features. They include high quality aluminum and magnesium construction for durability and lightweight comfort. They also feature open back design, which provides a more natural and expansive right. soundstage, making them ideal for critical listening. Can I use them directly over a USB connection to the headphone? The Focal Bathys headphones do not natively support a direct USB connection for audio. So it got the model there right, it got some things right, but a few things were wrong. These are closed back and Bluetooth, and they are meant to be used also with a direct USB connection via Type-C right here in their DAC mode. Let's see what the rabbit can figure out there. These headphones are the Focal Batiste. Do they have any special features? I apologize but I do not see any headphones labeled as focal betist in the image. The image shows a pair of black over-ear headphones with distinctive honeycomb style speaker grills, but I do not have enough information to determine the specific model. Let's try that again. You see where I'm going with this, it's consistency. What headphones are these? These appear to be a pair of focal ear headphones. Got the it distinctive wrong. circular speaker design and perforated grill pattern. So you can kind of see where I'm going. I'm going to pronounce it wrong so this can get it. Do the Focal Bathys have any special features? I'm sorry, but I couldn't find information on a headphone model called Focal Bathys. It's possible that this model is not widely known. So you see what I'm saying? Earlier I identified the headphone, now it doesn't know the headphone exists. Let's try it with this one. This is the classic Sennheiser HD 600. First, we'll do chat 
ChatGPT. I will hold it in my hand. What headphones did I just send you a picture of? The headphones you just sent a picture of are the Sennheiser HD 600. Cool. Do the HD 600 have any special features? And how long have they been in production? The Sennheiser HD 600 headphones have been in production since 1997. They are known for their high fidelity sound and have a reputation for being one of the best reference class headphones available. And now the rabbit. Same photo, same sort of angle and all that. What headphones are these? These are HD 600 headphones, as clearly indicated by the text on the headphone component in the image. Don't have to be sassy about it. How long have the HD 600 headphones been in production and do they have any special features? The HD 600 headphones have been in production for over 20 years. Known for their open back design, natural sound reproduction, and comfortable fit. They are renowned for their detailed and balanced sound signature, making them popular among audiophiles and professionals. What is their impedance, and what is the latest model in the line of HD600 headphones? The HD600 headphones have an impedance of 300 ohms. That's correct. The latest model in the line of HD600 headphones is the Sennheiser HD 660S, which offers improved Wrong. performance and features while maintaining the signature sound quality of the HD600 series. Now let's ask GPT. What's the latest headphone release in the line of headphones by Sennheiser, the HD600, so like the 650 and so on? The latest release in the Sennheiser HD600 series is the HD620S. This model was introduced in May 2024 and is a closed back headphone that aims to combine the benefits of both open and closed designs. Special features of the Sennheiser HD620S. One, custom tuned 42 millimeter dynamic transducers. These provide detailed natural sounds similar to open back designs while maintaining- Who's the head of audiophile products now at Sennheiser? If I recall, he recently posted a thread on Reddit. This could be a tough one. I'm curious if I can get this. The head of audiophile products at Sennheiser is Jermo Konka. He recently posted a thread on Reddit discussing the features and development of the new HD620S headphones, which are designed to merge the benefits of open and closed back headphones. See, that's really cool. Who's the head of audiophile products at Sennheiser? I'll need to search for that information. Let me find that for you. Are you, are you going to search for it? Is that it? Is that all we get? Okay, I'm just going to let this sit here. I don't know if it's actually doing anything right now or not. You get the idea. The Rabbit's a really cool device in the sense that you just press a button and wake it up and apparently sometimes it just goes into the settings when it wants to. Uh, if you shake the device, it goes into its settings menu. It's a cool device because you can just wake it up and start using it. But the accuracy is very low and it's very hit or miss. And the thing is, is that chat GPT 4.0, while significantly better, it still missed some things. So while I have a much higher degree of confidence than the one I carry in my pocket, it is still not great. It's much better than what's on the Rabbit. Now, these devices can be jailbroken. Um, I would almost recommend that because they have such major security flaws. Right now, the hard-coded API keys in this mean that basically uh, someone could get access to anything you've ever asked this, any pictures you've ever taken on the device, um, any replies that it's ever given you. They could remotely just break your device forever. It's not good. It's, it's kind of a privacy and security nightmare. But since this is a device that just runs Android, there are a pretty big number of people who are just loading custom versions of Android on this and then using it with ChatGPT, which is significantly better than what is built into this device. Now, the other downside is it has a very small battery at 1000 milliamp hours, which is kind of pathetic. Um, the bright side is the standby time is now really good. So I have not charged this device in about three days, uh, but when you're using it, the device drains really fast. So as you can see during this demo, it's gone down quite a fair bit just in this room. Me asking it questions drains it like crazy. Me letting it just sit there with the screen off, locked but still on standby where I can press the button and it comes to life. That standby time is excellent. I do like the hand fill device. It's got microphones. It has all the hardware necessary for someone to use it as a phone if it actually had the capabilities um, in the software, but it doesn't. If this had a really big battery and just regular Android, I would love using a device in this form factor as a phone just because it's kind of cool. Uh, but what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to end up 
you know, rooting the device and putting regular chat GPT on here because that's a lot better than what Rabbit has right now and I won't have to deal with as much of a uh, security and privacy nightmare. The device is cool. I did buy this with my own money. It's just AI has advanced so fast in the amount of time since this thing came out that it's already outdated by the time it reached my doorstep. Now, they could update it. Uh, I hope they do. There's a lot of things they need to fix. I also wish they had shipped it with a bigger battery. But either way, I don't know. It's a cool little gadget. Do I recommend it? No, gosh, no, no, not at all. Uh, actually, the opposite. I would say probably stay away from it unless you really just want a not super secure toy to play around with that you're not going to trust the accuracy of, or unless you plan on putting a custom version of Android on it and using it as a pocketable chat GPT device. In that case, yeah, go for it. It'd be pretty cool. Um, cell phones exist. This could have been an app. I see the merit of it being a hardware device. It is really cool just having a physical button to talk to a little pocket companion that's supposed to answer your questions. The roller wheel is interesting. I think it's dumb that you can't use the touchscreen to interact with the device because it is a touchscreen. You can turn it sideways. Well, it's not doing it right now. Normally you can turn it sideways and you can get access to an actual keyboard and just type in things to it. Uh, but I like the way it feels in the hand. I like the physical construction of the device. I wouldn't mind it being a physical device that could have been an app if it was good at what it did. It's just not. Uh, so if this was just a straight up chat GPT 4.0 device that I could just press a button, activate and start talking to, that'd be wicked. But it isn't and it kind of sucks. So cool hardware, bad software, neat idea, but it's just not there yet. In all likelihood, the devices we already carry in our pockets are likely going to be the AI devices of the future, the things that we're carrying around. So I think that's gonna wrap up this video. If you want, I have some exclusive content I'm posting over on Floatplane. Maybe we'll post a video on there of rooting this device and getting it to run Android. Well, a more open version of Android. It's already running Android and loading ChatGPT onto it. Other than that, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the forum or Discord both available the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.